about 1994. I was 17 years old, and at that time, uh, we, we listened to a lot of metal music, and I was getting bored with it. This is like 94, 90, uh, and I was pretty tired of the whole metal scene, and it was very hard to find anyone else that would, would be interested in doing something that would be different than that. I mean, in Denmark in the 90s was basically a wasteland for underground music and to a degree. So. I had this idea of like this sound that I wanted to hear, just didn't know what, if it even existed. And we were at this little shop in Seattle, and they, were, and they were playing this music. That's what I've been looking for. So I went up and asked the woman at the counter, like, what are you playing? And she goes, what's this band called in Slaughter Natives? When I went into this record shop in, in Odense, Denmark, which was selling like underground stuff in the butcher's backyard that was being played at the record shop. And I was like very intrigued by the sound of it and asked what it was because it seemed kind of like, like the perfect bridge between like black metal and more obscure underground stuff. There's this, there's this one little shop it was called Ohm Music, and it was just like a little tiny hole in the wall place. But I think I picked up a Mortis CD, um, I picked up an Arcana CD, and then a few other things I don't remember. Didn't realize they were even on the same label. I got hold of um, the Butcher's Backyard, and also that all the release that came around the same time, which also was a compilation, uh, the Carmanic Collection. Both had all these for me at that time, very obscure music, which uh, seemed very, very perfect for me. So I took the stuff home, I listened to it, and everything, I loved everything. Um, the best part was everything sounded completely different. They all had their own sound, but but I liked it all. And then I started, and then I then I noticed the little the little cold meat la label on them. And I was like, wait a minute, this is all on the same record label. From then on, they had changed the whole, uh, changed everything I was listening to. Most of the things would just be made by people that would just be a one man project uh, and I think that very much appealed to me and then at that time being disillusioned by the group mentality and, just, and I think that was very, very much inspirational as well. Uh, for me it changed everything, I mean uh, I could see that it was exactly what I've been looking for all those years. Feed the fire, fund the film at soulinflames.com.